everybody, welcome to an exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is the 3rd of July, 2015. And once again, happy 4th of July to everyone out there. Today being the official federal holiday. Happy belated Canada Day to at least two Canadia residents that I know watch this channel. I'm sure there are others. Uh, no offense if I've left you out, but I know two do for sure. So, to those two. At any rate, uh, we have some... Uh, a few announcements and a few kits that have come out. Uh, we're sort of into that lull week right now where it's too early for the August spot run news and it's too early for the July kit reissue, or kit, uh, you know, reissues and issues to come out. So uh, we do have, like I said, a few new uh, little uh, tid tidbits of information and then we have uh, one, two, th two kits that came out, three kits that came out, one of which is actually new. And... Uh, couple of reissues to talk about as well and a couple of uh, you know new kits as well because you know it wouldn't be japan if we didn't kick a few things out that were only minorly different from other things so on the new side of things uh well this isn't brand new because we've known about the uh bell kits volkswagen polo world rally championship uh, kit for uh eight nine months now it if it officially has a release date attached to it and that is going to be late august uh it may be out slightly earlier in europe than it is uh going to be out in japan which is where we got the release date from uh because uh bell kits will probably distribute their own kit in europe and it has to come to uh japan and then has to go through uh aoshima who will be distributing the kit in japan and in asia uh Right now, looks like the price on that is going to be about forty-five or no, forty-two dollars, excuse me, uh, which is not a bad price for a Bell kit. If you try to get any of the older ones, the Ford uh, Fiestas, Ford Focuses, uh, whichever those were, and there's also the Skoda that we showed you a few weeks ago that I got, uh, you're going to be looking to pay about fifty bucks to get them in the United States without paying the shipping attached to it. So forty-two bucks is uh you know going to be 50 bucks when you're shipping so the price is right where we you know would expect it to be also a reminder that uh racing decals 43 the company in spain will be doing a carbon fiber set for it i don't know if studio 27 will be it's not a, on, on any of their pending lists so unless they just decide to on a whim then uh uh racing decals 43 will be where you go to get your uh, carbon fiber for that don't know when those decals are going to be released officially they are on the pending side of things but uh, uh diego the guy that runs the place is actually here in the united states on his honeymoon so uh you know i'm not going to bother him while he's with his uh brand new wife touring new york city and pester him about decals for a kit that isn't coming out for another two months so we'll let him be and we'll talk to him again once he gets back over <laughs> in spain on the uh, kit announcement side of things, we found out uh, two kits, or oh, two announcements today. One of these is actually sort of more new than not. Uh, Tamiya will be rerunning the what they call the Clearview Lexus LFA. Now, this is the Lexus LFA kit that has the clear body. Uh, for people who are not really up on their Tamiya things, Tamiya tends to do that, where they offer a clear body on certain things. Uh, Porsche Carrera GT had a clear body. Uh, the, the Ferrari... Uh, 360 Modena and 360 Spider have a completely clear undercarriage. You may recall, of course, that there is a completely clear chassis to the Mercedes uh, 300SL Gullwing that they just did. Uh, the actual Lexus LFA is a real model kit. It's probably one of the best model kits that to me has ever done. Probably if you were to go around and ask everybody who builds uh, import kits on a regular basis so they have you know a, a basis to go by it's one thing to buy a to me a kit and go wow this really goes together well and then that's the only one you've ever built and you have no frame of reference it's one of the most expensive kits they did prior to the la ferrari which is actually uh probably about another twenty dollars more expensive here in the united states it's not that expensive in japan of course which is how you buy your japanese kits but uh, it's probably one of the more technically detailed kits. It's a shame that most of it goes away because of the way that the undercarriage goes un, you know, away under diffusers and, and uh, splash panels and everything like that. But it is certainly one of the most technically advanced uh, kits that to me has ever done. It has like rare earth magnets for the, to uh, attach the spoiler so you can attach it in either an up or down position and change it out with having things being glued. All sorts of neat things. a full detail kit. Full detail. Uh, but you know the reason it scares a lot of people off here in the United States because the price on the kit is like seventy-two to seventy-eight dollars. Uh, of course, if you order through Hobbyland Japan or Hobby Search, you could be paying in the 
maybe the high 30s to low 40s, depending on what the yen is doing on any given day. Uh, the clear view body is a few dollars more, I guess, because, you know, it's the clear body. But otherwise, the kit is the exact same kit. The actual model kit, if you are interested in getting an LFA and you don't want to deal with trying to paint a clear body, the actual model kit is still in the Tamiya catalog and still probably actually in stock at every place you would uh, normally hear me mention. The new kit, or this is probably going to be like a hybrid new kit, sort of the way the toy, the uh, Honda S600 was. It was, it's, the S600 is severely based in the S800 kit, but it's not, you know, a modified tooling. It's actually a new tool that is heavily patterned on the older kit. They're going to be doing a Nissan Skyline R32. For those people who aren't up on their Skylines, the R32 was the early 90s Skyline. It was the first Skyline after... The Skylines had been, you know, sort of phased out and discontinued in the 1970s. Uh, the R32 GTR, they're calling it a Nismo Custom. Now, we don't know exactly know what, what the custom part is exactly because we don't have anything more than, like, one picture, which wasn't even worth trying to download and, and show you guys because it's, it's so tiny and small. But to me, it had done a full detail uh, R32 GTR in the past. Actually, it's probably one of the cheapest kits you can buy uh, that Tamiya still makes on a regular basis other than maybe the Ferrari uh, Testarossa. If you find it on the right day, the factory stock R32 GTR kit is like $12. Uh, this is going to be probably patterned heavily upon that kit. However, the factory stock kit and the Nismo kit are, are world apart. If you ever really pay attention to Skylines and stuff like that, the, the Nismo kit's the Nismo car, the, the upgrade from you know Nissan Motorsports, uh, you know gives a whole bunch of aero packages and, and air dams, and there's a giant, f giant intercooler uh, present on the R32 version, and all that stuff isn't going to jive with the factory stock version of the GTR, as you know it would probably be way too much modification. You'd never be able to get the stock kit back again. So this will be, again, a heavily patterned but newly cut steel new tool. It's, right now it looks like it's about 21 to $25 on pre-order. It just came out, uh, as far as the announcement goes, just came out this morning, so you're, you know, you're not going to be like lagging behind. This is real honest-to-God, right-up-to-date <laughs> information in this dashboard today. Uh, and that is what we have for August. Uh Three more decal sets from Studio 27 for the GT3 series. These are all going to be mid-July uh, releases, allegedly. Uh, let me get them so I got them in the right order here. This, it's not the best picture in the world, but it's the only one I could get that really show what, what you're getting. This is the Team Russian number 71. You may recall the decals that just came out uh, the end of June were for the Team 70, the banana yellow car. This is the Team 71, uh, the uh, same team, but the number 71. Obviously, a completely different color scheme, uh, a white car, not a yellow one. Uh, this was, I believe, their pro car, because the yellow one, as it turns out, is the pro-am car, but this is for the 2015 Monza. And then we have two uh, race liveries for the 2015 Nuremberg ring race and that is the Mark VDS number 25 number 26 I'm not exactly sure what difference there is between the two other than the number being different but this is the 25 from 2015 uh, still got my lion's head on the side you guys who follow this know I pick, I uh, I love these Mark VDS team logo that lion head that's on the side of every single car they have and I probably have about decals to do almost a dozen of them at this point uh, and then also the Zach Speed, and a lot of people will remember Zach Speed as being the team that ran those Mercury or, or well Ford Capris uh, back in the day. Well, uh, they're still around, and uh, they're running uh, Mercedes-Benz SLS AMGs now, and that is what this kit is, uh, or this the Cal set will be this mobile sponsored number twenty-seven, uh, and this also, like I said, was a two thousand and fifteen Nuremberg Ring car. So that takes us over to uh, what has come out in Japan, because obviously nothing's going to come out in the United States at all. All your June kits just came out. And uh, we have one, honest to God, new kit to talk about, and then everything else will be uh, reissues and modified, re very modified uh, reissues to varying extents. All of this is an Aoshima show, by the way. Uh, the This kit first up here is a, a joint venture with Aoshima and, of course, BMAX, 
This is the McLaren MP4 II. This is a brand new kit, uh, represents the 1984 British Grand Prix. Uh, I imagine there will probably be other versions of this kit because this says British Grand Prix version, which to me indicates that there, of course, will be more versions. That would only make sense in the, uh, you know, in the overall se overall you know s set of things because you're not going to create a brand new tool for one uh, thing. Uh, I don't know that much about the McLaren MP4 II. I'm not a really big F1 guy in the first place. I'm certainly not a, a great big uh, you know, proponent or, or builder of out-of-scale kits. I know 120 scale is standard for F1, but it's just not what I build for the most part. <clears throat> I do have some F1 kits, uh, or some F1, some 120 scale Lindbergh kits. And, uh, you know, it is what it is in that sense. This is a full detail kit. It has a complete and total engine transaxle, the whole nine yards. It's really, really detailed from the instructions. I don't know how accurate it is to the actual real car. I don't know how good of a kit it'll build up to be because McLe because Aoshima and B-Max, of course, have never done an F1 car in the past, so there's nothing to compare it to. Uh, but there, that it is out there, and if you're interested in it, there it is. There's also a detail upset for it, which is what this is. Uh, this includes uh, a rather large uh, fret of photo etch. Uh, I believe there's seatbelt material in here. There's carbon fiber decals in here. I have no idea what that chrome uh, runner is supposed to be. But if you look at the instructions to the McLaren, uh, it heavily relies upon this detail upset. It, it basically is like, oh, hey, you know, you should have bought that detail upset because uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, stuff you could have put on your model if you had bought this stuff. The other thing about the McLaren is, of course, uh, tobacco sponsorship is evil and will harm our children, just like the Confederate flag. And so if you want to build this correctly, you're going to have to go search out, and they wouldn't be hard to find because they just came out last month, the Taboo Graphics decal uh, upgrade set to this. It's like 8 or $9. That includes the Marlboro logos that you need to build this car correctly. Obviously, this is a Marlboro car in real life, and there are no Marlboro decals included because, you know, evil tobacco. Now, now that we hate the Confederate flag or the Confederate battle flag, maybe they'll start putting, you know, tobacco advertisements back on, you know, model kits because, you know, that's got to be far worse than smoking, right? At any rate, uh, over, <laughs> continuing along the Aosha Trail here, got the, the, New quote unquote kit here, the Lamborghini Countach 5000 Quattrofoil. This is the fuel injected version. Uh, this represents a 1988 uh, 5000 QV. The kit that we did the review on a few weeks ago, of course, represents a 1985. Uh, the differences uh, you notice the side skirts there below the door. Uh, if you paid attention to the comment section in that video, you notice I was talking to somebody about the side skirts being Testa Rosa-ish. And you can see there they've got the side gills that uh, are, while much, much smaller and not in the middle of the door, do sort of have that uh, Testa Rosa look to them. You get a new interior bucket with this because the interior floor pan was, was slightly different in this uh, in 1988. You get an entirely new uh, engine container, for lack of a better term, the inner fender wells where the engine mounts, a whole plethora, of course, of new engine parts to make the uh, Bosch K-Tronic fuel-injected version of the engine. And that pretty much is it. 97, 96% of this kit is just a straight repop of the kit that we, we did a review of uh, a couple weeks ago, and then there are the new parts to update it to the 1988 uh, specification as well as the fuel injected specification. Also, the, I know that at least one person was asking whether or not this kit was going to include the photo etch and the metal transfers that are in, or, or well, they call them metal stickers, but they're metal transfers uh, that were in the 5000 QV kit that we reviewed. And if you notice down there in the bottom left, photo etch parts and metal stickers are included. So, like I said, this is exactly the 85 kit only with the updated parts to make a 88 out of it whether or not that's enough to get you to go buy another one i don't know i have one it's in japan uh in my my hobby link japan personal warehouse at the moment but uh i bought it mostly because of the of the different engine i like the fact that i can have three uh Countach models and each one of them will have a different power plant in them uh another slightly very itty bitty modified reissue here is this McLaren F1 GTR long tail uh, representing the Golf uh, sponsored 1997 Le Mans 24 hour. Uh, this car finished second overall in the race. It's a very famous car in Japan because it was run by a Japanese team. 
Uh, I know a lot of times you'll hear me talk about on the Studio 27 decals about them being wraps, being you paint the car one color and the decals do everything else. This, guys, this is not a wrap by any stretch of the imagination. While you do notice that these are cartograph decals, so they are prime quality decals, uh, you're going to have to paint the black and the, and the blue yourself. The orange pinstripe around the top of the black and the bottom of the black, as well as that larger orange stripe that runs up the middle of the black uh, side, and the orange for the top and the mirrors and all that stuff. I don't, actually, I don't know about the mirrors, but the actual orange stripe for the roof uh, in the front there, uh, the intake on the front there, that's all included as decals. The orange stripe on the side, all the orange pinstriping, and the orange, at least the orange for the middle roof. I didn't actually look to see if they the uh, mirrors had decals or not but that does mean you're going to have to mask this car and paint it in the mclaren blue or the golf blue technically and the black uh fortunately <laughs> you know you don't have to mask off that that stripe on the side and paint it orange that at least is a decal but uh part of me was kind of hoping that they would just you just have to paint the kit blue and everything else would be done with the decals but uh, it is not to be. You are going to have to, of course, pay a lot of attention when you're masking this because the doors uh, do open, or could could open, I should say. They're not functional. Uh, but, they, of course, the doors being openable means they're separate parts, so you're really going to have to watch your masking to make sure that your uh, you know, masking uh, you know, matches because you notice the black sort of goes over the fender and then comes back down and then goes up over the door on the back fender there. So uh, some uh, good studying of the actual pictures of the real car. Uh, as well as you know, just taking your time doing the masking work is going to be required here. Otherwise, uh, your you know your orange pinstriping isn't going to match. Uh, you know, it's it's not going to fit if you paint the uh, the black part in the wrong place. The last two, uh, you know, and these really aren't even uh, modified; these are just straight reissues, but they're pre-painted. Uh, is your 2012 Toyota Crown Hybrid Royal Saloon? Uh, this one is pre-painted in metallic silver. And the 2012 Crown Athlete, and this one's pre-painted in black. As we've talked about before, Aoshima pre-painted kits are completely painted from top to bottom, in and out, including the black surrounds on the windows and everything else. So these pretty much are uh, great weekend projects because you can just really honestly slap them together. Uh, you know, of course, you have to touch up the paint where, where it comes off of the uh, runners and stuff like that because all the parts are painted on the runners. And you will have to, of course, deal with the fact that uh, Aoshima does not do any kind of body prep on the bodies themselves. So they're going to have all the mold lines painted underneath the paint. But for a shelf model, for something you can build and for like a 24-hour build or a weekend slump buster or something like that, and you're interested in either either uh, you know, a really bland Toyota or a slightly less bland Toyota, then this would, you know, is a way to go. Of course, there are, of course, there, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, there are the pre-painted Nissan GTR kits, the pre-painted uh, uh, Toyota BR or Toyota 86 and Subaru BRZs. Uh, there, there have been a, there's a, I think there's a pre-painted, yeah, there are pre-painted uh, Nissan Silvias. There's pre-painted uh, Mitsubishi Evo 10s. There's a whole bunch of these kits in the uh, Aoshima pre-painted line. If you're looking to sort of uh, do some investigation into what you're going to get for out of an Aoshima kit without really, you know, I don't know if, if uh, you know, committing to it is the right word, but without getting into a whole, you know, big ball of wax. I mean, you can just put together and it'll look good on your shelf. The pre-paints are a, you know, solution to that problem. Otherwise, if you remember I was talking about these kits when they came out last year, they're, they're a duplicate uh, carbon copies of the actual model kits, the unpainted ones. They're just, like I said, painted. And then one reissue uh, for this week, and this would be the last of the uh, last of the June kits that uh, that uh, we we're waiting on. And this actually came out on June 30th, so it made it. Uh, and this, is, of course, is famously one of the Rocket Bunnies. Uh, this one being the uh, Enki racing version, uh, the whole Enki versus uh, Volk is based on the wheels that they have. This is the Yankee racing wheels here. This does come with left-hand drive, does come with all the Scion decals, uh, because in real life, <laughs> ironically, when Greddy and Rocket Bunny went out to do the body work and all the other stuff about these uh, Rocket Bunnies, this one and the black one, there were no Toy 86s available in Japan. They had all been sold, and they had to actually buy Scions in Los Angeles and ship them all the way back to Japan. So the real cars really are Scion uh, left-hand drive American cars. So uh, 
you can uh, you, you're not going to get stock wheels with these, and these do not come with it. And the, neither of the Rocket Bunny gets come with engines. Uh, but you know you don't have to build it as a Rocket Bunny. You, all the stock parts are included except for the stock wheels. Uh, the I don't know that necessarily that these wheels would look well, these wheels entire combination would look really great without the over fenders on them because they are kind of big for the car otherwise. But uh, you know, if you can't find one of the regular kits, and there were a set of factory stock kits, of course, that did have an engine in them, which I think are the preferable ones to get because who doesn't want an engine, right? Uh, those are out there. But if you you know you can't find them, you can build this without making it into this necessarily. Or uh, you know, I know a lot of people hate the Rocket Bunny trend, uh, especially a certain friend of mine who is trying to make one that has the hashtag of F the Rocket Bunny in the decal someplace. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't really care. I kind of like it. But uh, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, was uh, pretty cool a uh, year and a half ago when it came out. And now uh, everything everywhere has Rocket Bunny style over fenders and it's getting, you know, kind of played out. So I understand that. Uh, guys, that, I believe, is that for this week. So, uh have a good fourth stay safe designated driver if you're into that kind of thing uh and we will see you guys uh next week for uh oh special birthday episode actually the stash report really is on my birthday next week so anyway guys have a good weekend and we'll catch you guys on the other side <laughs>